Universe Books Audio and Video Books 2 in 1 Universe Books presents The Miracles of Your Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy, PhD, 1953 Chapter 5 How to Apply the Subconscious Mind to Marital Problems The best time to prevent a divorce is before marriage. Ignorance of the powers within you is the cause of all of your marital trouble. Learn how to attract the right wife or husband. For instance, if you are a girl seeking a husband, do not begin to tell yourself all of the reasons why you cannot get married, rather tell yourself all of the reasons why you can be happily married. Eradicate the word cannot from your vocabulary. He can, who believes he can. You are now acquainted with the way the subconscious mind works. You know that whatever you impress upon it, shall be experienced in your world. Begin now to impress your subconscious mind with the qualities and characteristics you admire in a man. This is one technique, sit down at night in your armchair, close your eyes, let go, relax the body, become very quiet, passive, and receptive. Talk to your subconscious mind, and say to it, I am now attracting a man into my experience who is honest, sincere, loyal, kind, faithful, and prosperous. He is peaceful and happy. These qualities are sinking down into my subconscious mind now. As I dwell upon these qualities, they become a part of me. I know there is an irresistible law of attraction, and that I attract to me a man according to my subconscious belief. I attract that which I feel as true in my subconscious mind. In other words, I know that according to the law, I will attract a man in accordance with my feelings, beliefs, and impressions made on my subconscious mind regarding the type of man I seek. Practice this process of impregnating your subconscious mind, then you will have the joy of attracting a man having the qualities and characteristics you mentally dwelt upon. The subconscious intelligence will open up a pathway whereby both of you will meet according to the irresistible and changeless law of your own subconscious mind. Have a keen desire to give the best that is in you of love, devotion, and cooperation. Be receptive to this gift of love which you have given to your subconscious mind. Marriage between man and woman should be an act of love. Honesty, sincerity, kindness, and integrity are forms of love. Each should be perfectly honest and sincere with the other. There is not a true marriage when the man marries a woman for her money, social position, or to lift his ego, because there is no sincerity or honesty there. The marriage is not of the heart. When a woman says, I am tired working, I want to get married, because I want security, her premise is false, she is not using the laws of mind correctly. Her security depends upon her knowledge of the interaction of the conscious and subconscious mind and its application. For example, a woman will never lack for wealth or health if she applies the technique outlined in the respective chapters of this book. Her wealth can come to her independent of her husband, father, or anyone else. A woman is not dependent on her husband for health, peace, joy, inspiration, guidance, love, wealth, security, happiness, or anything in the world. Her security and peace of mind come from her knowledge of the inner powers within her, and her constant use of the laws of her own mind in a constructive fashion. Marrying for money or to get even with someone is, of course, a farce and a masquerade. A man and a woman must be subjectively united in the sense that a real love or sense of oneness prevails, in other words, two hearts are united in love, freedom, and respect. A number of people have said to me, oh, we love each other, why should we bother getting married? The answer to this is extraordinarily simple, what we subconsciously feel and accept as true is always objectified or made manifest on the screen of space. Their reasoning, therefore, is false and insincere. The law of mind is, as within, so without. Let us take the case of a man or a woman who has made an honest mistake. She now finds herself married to a drug addict, he refuses to work, she has to support him, he is ruthless and cruel. It is true that due to her state of mind, she attracted that man, yet she is not condemned to live in a world of misery brought about by her own mood or ignorance. Had she used her subconscious mind in the right way, this would not have happened. I am sure that if you fell into the gutter, slipped perhaps on a banana peel, it would be silly to condemn yourself and stay in the gutter. The obvious thing to do would be to get up out of the gutter, wash yourself, and keep on going. The woman herein referred to, packed her belongings, and left this man. 
she realized it was an intolerable situation. Surely this woman is not condemned to live with this man when their hearts and minds are miles apart. You can tie two people together with a rope, yet they can be as far apart as the poles in thought, feeling, and perspective. You are divorced mentally when your mind and heart are elsewhere. To stay together in such circumstances is chaotic from all angles. Marriage is a union of two hearts, there is no marriage where the hearts are not bound together in love and peace. Adultery takes place in the heart first. The heart is the seat of the emotions. If you are resentful, hateful, and critical of your partner, you have already committed adultery in your heart. To direct your mental and emotional operations along destructive and negative channels is to commit adultery. Always remember the adulterous state takes place in the mind. Bodily acts follow mental states, they do not precede. Perhaps as you read these pages, you are saying, I know a young couple who got married recently. They both used the laws of mind, they seemed perfectly happy in every way. Now they are contemplating a divorce. The mental attitude which attracted and endeared them to each other, must be maintained and strengthened, in order to preserve the marriage. If a disagreement arises or some slight argument occurs, and one of the partners engages the mind on a negative idea such as resentment or hostility, he is uniting with the error in his mind, and it is destructive to marital happiness. The little arguments and quarrels, which married people engage in, will not hurt, it is the sustained grudge or ill feeling which does the damage. When the harsh words said are all forgotten and forgiven a few minutes later, no harm has been done. It is when the feeling of being hurt is prolonged, that the danger lies. If a man begins to brood, grows morbid against his wife, because of the things she said or did, he is committing adultery, since he is mentally engaged in bitterness. This mood will endanger the marriage except he forgives and radiates love and goodwill to his partner. Let the man who is bitter and resentful swallow his sharp remarks, let him go to great length to be considerate, kind, and courteous. He can deftly skirt the differences. Through practice and mental effort, he can get out of the habit of antagonism, then he will be able to get along better not only with his wife, but with business associates also. Assume the harmonious state, and eventually you will find peace and harmony. Let us have a few remarks about the nagging wife. Many times the reason she is a nagger is because she gets no attention, oftentimes it is a craving for love and affection. Give it to her. There is also the nagging type of woman who wants to make the man conform to her particular pattern. This is about the quickest way in the world to get rid of a man. The wife and the husband must cease being scavengers, always looking at the petty faults or errors in each other. Let each give attention and praise to the positive and wonderful qualities in the other. A great mistake is to discuss your marital problems or difficulties with neighbors and relatives. Suppose, for example, a wife says to the neighbor, John never gives me any money, he treats my mother abominably, drinks to excess, and he is constantly abusive and insulting. Now this wife is degrading and belittling her husband in the eyes of all of the neighbors and relatives, he no longer appears as the ideal husband to them. Never discuss your marital problems with anyone except a trained counselor. Why have many people thinking negatively of your marriage? Moreover, as you discuss and dwell upon these shortcomings of your husband, you are actually creating these states within yourself. Who is thinking and feeling it? You are. As you think and feel, so are you. Relatives will usually always give you the wrong advice, it is usually biased and prejudiced, because it is not given in an impersonal way. Any advice you receive which violates the golden rule, which is a cosmic law, is not good or sound. It is well to remember that no two human beings ever live beneath the same roof without clashes of temperament, periods of hurts, and strain. Never display the unhappy side of your marriage to your friends. Keep your quarrels to yourself. Refrain from criticism and condemnation of your partner. If there are children in the home, let the father praise their mother, let him call attention at times to her fine qualities and the happy aspects of the home. A husband must not try and make his wife over into a second edition of himself. The tactless attempt to change her in many ways is so foreign to her nature, these attempts are always foolish, many times they result in a dissolution of the marriage. These attempts to alter her destroy her pride and self-esteem, and arouse a spirit of contrariness and resentment that proves fatal to the marriage bond. Adjustments are needed, of course, 
but if you have a good look inside of your own mind, and study your character and behavior, you will find so many shortcomings there to keep you busy the rest of your life. If you say, I will make him over into what I want, you are looking for trouble and the divorce court. You are asking for misery. You will have to learn the hard way that there is no one to change but yourself. If you have a marital problem, ask yourself what it is you want, then realize that you can achieve that goal. You would solve your marital problem in the same way as any other problem. Define clearly what you want, then realize that what the mind engages in, it creates. A woman told me one time that after 30 years her husband began to drink heavily, neglecting his home and children. She began to claim peace and harmony in her home and heart. She paid no attention to the circumstances or conditions. She quietly engaged her mind on her goal, knowing that her subconscious mind would bring about and magnify what she gave her attention to. Harmony and peace were again restored after a few months' devotion to her true goal. This is an illustration of the miracles of the subconscious mind. By resenting and fighting the situation, this woman would only make matters worse. If there is quarreling and bickering in the home, turn your attention away from personalities, environments, and conditions, and focus your attention on your ideal, which is love, peace, and harmony. As you feed your mind upon these ideas, the subconscious mind will respond and bring about harmony. I am often asked this question, if one of the partners has an intense desire to terminate the marriage, and the other has an equally intense desire to remain united in marriage, and they are both sincere, what will happen? In such cases there is a mental tug of war, this is a house divided against itself, sooner or later it will dissolve, however, their attitude of mind may prolong the situation. The proper and correct way to solve this marital problem is to lift the thought above personalities and conditions, and begin to direct your thought to your true desire, trusting the infinite intelligence within you to bring about the perfect solution. Through the right application of the law of your subconscious mind, you can bring harmony where discord is, and resurrect peace where confusion reigns, moreover, the right application of your subconscious mind can dissolve a bad marriage. Do not let foolish pride, anger, and a desire to get even take you to the divorce court, when all of the while your heart is one with the husband you left. Let love, goodwill, and kindness lead you back to the one you love in your heart. You can heal any problem through the right application and direction of your subconscious mind. Listening to the intuition or guidance which comes from the subjective wisdom within, you would have perhaps prevented you from contracting the present marriage. You did not know how to use it, now you do. If you had a bad start, you can adjust it now by using the procedure and techniques outlined in this chapter. By exalting and lifting up your partner in thought and feeling, and always cherishing the lovely qualities which brought you together, you can make your marriage a beautiful experience and a joy forever. Chapter 6. The Subconscious Mind and Guidance in explaining the workings of the subconscious mind to our recent college class, one of the men present said that the answer to his problem came to him while he was shaving. The reason for this was that while he was shaving, he was relaxed, then the wisdom and intuition of the subconscious mind came to the surface mind. This man had been giving intense conscious application to his problem, for several days. By adhering to the following instructions he got results, as he was about to go to sleep at night, he would say, I am now turning this request over to my deeper mind, I know it has the answer, and I will receive it. In the first chapter we told you that the subconscious mind will awaken you at 6 in the morning, because you are thinking about 6 o'clock in the morning before you go to sleep. In the same manner the subconscious mind took up his case, having the superior wisdom, it logically deduces the perfect answer, and gave it to him. You will often note that immediately after awakening, the answer will come to you, because you are still half asleep and half awake, there is an outcropping of the wisdom of the subconscious mind at that time. When you are beset with a problem, what do you do? Many people will worry and fret about the problem, this makes matters worse, because the subconscious mind always magnifies what we impress upon it. Many liken the subconscious mind to a bank, you are constantly making deposits in this universal bank. Be sure you deposit seeds of peace, harmony, faith, and goodwill, these will be magnified a thousandfold, then prosperity and good fortune will be your harvest. How do you find yourself reacting to the problems of the day and to your environment? If you react with anger, bitterness, criticism, and resentment, you are making these deposits in the bank within you. 
When you need strength, faith, and confidence, you cannot draw them out, because you have not placed these qualities in your bank. Begin now to deposit joy, love, peace, and good humor, busy your mind with these things, then the subconscious bank will give you compound interest. It will magnify exceedingly beyond your wildest dreams. When you have what you term a difficult decision to make, or when you fail to see the solution to your problem, begin at once to think constructively about it. If you are fearful and worried, you are not really thinking. Real thought consists in contemplating whatsoever things are true, just, honest, lovely, and of good report. True thinking is free from fear. The real reason why you are fearful is because you have a false concept, or you are taking a wrong view of things. Probably you believe that external things, conditions, and circumstances control you, and that they are causative. Remember you have dominion over your environment and conditions. Here is a simple technique which you can follow, quiet the mind, still the body, tell the body to relax, it has to obey you. It has no volition, initiative, or intelligence of itself, it is an emotional disc which records your beliefs and impressions. Immobilize your attention, focus your thought on the solution to your problem. Try and solve it with your conscious mind. Think how happy you would be about the perfect solution. If your mind wanders, bring it back gently. In this sleepy drowsy state, say quietly and positively, the answer is mine now, I know my subconscious mind knows the answer. Live now in the mood or feeling of the solution. Sense the feeling you would have if the perfect answer were yours now. Let your mind play with this mood in a relaxed way, then drop off to sleep. You may fall asleep sooner than you expected, but you were thinking about the answer, the time was not wasted. When you awaken, and you do not have the answer, get busy about something else. Probably when you are preoccupied with something else the answer will come into your mind, like toast pops out of the toaster. Never think about your problem in this manner, things are getting worse. I will never get the answer. I see no way out. It is hopeless. You are reversing the law, and undoing the good work you have done. Thinking about the answer activates the intelligence of the subconscious which knows all, sees all, and has the know-how of accomplishment. The subconscious mind has the power to create, it also obeys the orders given to it by the conscious mind. Remember always the simple truth, the conscious mind has the power of choice, the subconscious does what it is told to do. The latter accepts your beliefs and convictions, and brings them into your experience. It is an infinite creative power. Some time ago I received a clipping from a magazine describing how Dr. Banting solved his problem of diabetes. He had made a profound study of the disease. One night he was awakened in the early hours of the morning, with the answer to extract the substance from the degenerated pancreatic duct of dogs, this was the origin of insulin, which has helped millions of people. It does not follow that you will always get an answer overnight, the answer may not come for weeks or months. Do not be discouraged. Keep on turning it over every night to the subconscious mind prior to sleep, as if you had never done it before. One of the reasons for the delay may be that you look upon it as a major problem. You may believe it will take a long time to solve it. The subconscious mind is timeless and spaceless. Go to sleep believing you have the answer now, and that the solution is yours now. Do not postulate the answer in the future. Have an abiding faith in the outcome. Become convinced now, as you read this book, that there is an answer, and a perfect solution for you. Here is a very simple technique used from time immemorial to get an answer from the subconscious mind, calmly think over what you want, such as, the answer, the harmonious solution, or the right decision. The best time to turn over a request is just before going to sleep. Relax the body, still the wheels of your mind, suggest sleep to yourself. You will begin to feel sleepy, but you are still consciously aware and capable of directing your attention. For example, you can hear a baby cry next door, or you can hear someone walking around a house. You are in a state akin to sleep, between the waking and sleeping state. The Nancy School of Therapeutics calls this state, the reverie. In this drowsy meditative state, you induce the subconscious mind to take over your problem or request, this passing over to the subconscious mind is best accomplished through the above process. You infer no opponent, you use no willpower. You imagine the end, the solution, and the freedom state. 
Do this with complete naivete and simplicity. Have a simple, childlike, miracle-making faith. Picture yourself without the problem. Cut out all of the red tape from the process. The simple way is the best. This is an illustration, I lost a valuable ring, it was an heirloom, I looked everywhere for it, and could not locate it. I decided to practice what I preach. At night I talked to the subconscious in the same manner that I would talk to anyone. I said to it prior to dropping off to sleep, you know all things, you know where that ring is, and you now reveal to me where it is. In the morning I awoke suddenly with the words ringing in my ear, ask Robert. I thought it very strange that I should ask Robert, however, I followed the inner voice of intuition. Robert said, oh, yes, I picked it up on the sidewalk in front of the house. It is in my drawer, it did not seem very valuable, so I did not say anything about it. The subconscious mind will always answer you if you trust it. A young man in our recent class had this experience, his father passed on to the next dimension, and apparently left no will. However, this man's sister told him that their father had confided to her that a will had been executed which was fair to all. All attempts to locate the will failed. During the closed class on the miracles of the subconscious mind, this young man put into practice what he heard. As he went to sleep, he said, I now turn this request over to the subconscious mind, it knows just where that will is, it reveals it to me, then he condensed his request clown to one word, answer, repeating it over and over again as a lullaby. He lulled himself to sleep with the word, answer. This student had a dream that night, a very vivid realistic dream, wherein he saw the name of a certain bank in Los Angeles and its address. He went there, found a safe deposit vault registered in the name of his father, which solved all of his problems. Your thought as you go to sleep arouses the powerful latency which is within you. For example, let us suppose you are wondering whether to sell your home, buy a certain stock, sever partnership, move to New York or stay in Los Angeles, dissolve the present contract or take a new one. Do this, sit quietly in your armchair or at the desk in your office, remember that there is a universal law of action and reaction. The action is your thought. The reaction is the response from your subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is reactive and reflexive, this is its nature. It rebounds, rewards, repays, it is the law of correspondence. It responds by corresponding. As you contemplate right action, you will automatically experience a reaction or response in yourself. You have now used the infinite intelligence resident in the subconscious mind to the point where it begins to use you, from then on, your course of action is directed and controlled by the subjective wisdom within you, which is all wise and omnipotent. Your decision will be right, there will only be right action, because you are under a subjective compulsion to do the right thing. I use the word compulsion, because the law of the subconscious is compulsive. Our subconscious convictions and beliefs dictate and control all of our conscious actions. The secret of guidance or right action is to mentally devote yourself to the right answer, until you find its response in you. The response is a feeling, an inner awareness, an overpowering hunch whereby you know that you know. You have used the power to the point where it begins to use you. You cannot possibly fail or make one false step while operating under the direction of the subjective wisdom within you. Think of a garden, then you will understand the twofold aspect of mind, and the subjective law by which it operates. The conscious mind plants the seed in the soil. It decides what kind of seed shall be planted. As you know the soil will grow whatever is planted, whether it is grapes or thorns. Similarly, Look upon the subconscious mind as the soil, it contains all of the elements necessary and essential for growth. Again let us realize it is the nature of the soil to bring forth, but as you know, it is not the slightest bit interested in what it brings forth. It does not care whether it brings forth a pear tree or an apple tree. All of the laws of nature would be violated should the soil refuse to produce or grow poisonous plants. Exactly the same thing is true of the subconscious mind, it is a doer it never questions or talks back to you. It accepts what you deposit in it, and produces it in your experience whether it is good or bad. Learn to use your subconscious mind constructively, wisely, and judiciously. I want to stress this important fact, you will always receive guidance in respect to the subject in which you think about the most. 
the subconscious mind is impersonal and no respecter of persons. If, by illustration, you begin to think about how you can set fire to a certain building without being detected, ideas and thoughts will come to you for the evil and destructive uses of fire. The universal energy or power in and of itself is perfectly harmless, however, you can use it for constructive or destructive purposes. Let us take the atomic energy about which we read so much, it is perfectly harmless. You know very well it is in the mind of man that the danger of atomic energy lies. He can use the atomic energy to warm or light a house or destroy thousands of people. You receive guidance in accordance with what you habitually think about. If you think and dwell upon fears, troubles, and failure, you will be guided in the wrong direction, and more chaos and confusion will be experienced by you. Take this great thought, and dwell upon it, there is nothing to fear in all of the universe. You have the power of control through the wise use of your subconscious mind. Sit down quietly now, and think of a beautiful lake on top of a mountain, it is a still quiet night. On the surface of the quiet placid lake, you see mirrored the stars, the moon, and perhaps the trees nearby. If the lake is disturbed, you will not see the stars or the moon. Similarly quiet your mind, relax, and let go. Think of peace and stillness, then over the mirrored waters of your mind will move the answer to your question. Well, here we finished this chapter and this part of this book. Continue to listen in next video. You can find the link to the playlist with all videos of this audiobook in the description of this video, or directly in the playlists page of this channel. If you enjoy this work, we thank you if you comment, subscribe, and like this video. Be always welcome. Production, Universe Books.